I got a question that I'm just we're just going to throw out here to the to the hive mind and um, see if we can get a little bit of discussion going because I know we we we've, we've had this we I've seen this conversation in my entire life as an amateur radio operator mm -hmm. and um you know one thing people say is we got you know ham radio is dying we got to get more youth involved how can we get more youth involved what do we need to get more youth involved and um the question i'm going to ask and i've then i'm going to support it best i can is is getting more youth involved in ham radio the right track for growing the hobby and what i'm going to say is i think we are undercutting ourselves by exclusively going after the youth market to try to grow the ham radio the hobby the amateur radio service and a couple of reasons number one is that um youth you know if, if we're looking if we're looking at kids you know kid well kids are you know the advantage we got with that is is kids you know they've got flexible minds and they'll they'll pick stuff up but um they don't have any disposable income and so we get them their license well what are they going to do next with it i don't know how are they gonna how are they going to grow or or it, it, it you know it, it advance are they going to keep up are they going to keep the hobby up um are they going to get different interests are they going to go off are they going to graduate from school go off to college and find something else so is that something we want to do uh instead we really should be trying to attract people in their 20s and their 30s you know sort of that that sweet spot between let's say between the age of 28 and 35 uh <laughs> you know maybe they're um you know they're 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 starting to settle down they're looking for something you know maybe some interests that are outside of what they normally do that's not work that's not the other types of socialization that young adults do you know, but they want something that you know maybe you know maybe is a little bit more you know say intellectual or uh something that that you know they they that could be done in sort of a group setting and also as a as a solo endeavor so and you know maybe they got young families so something that that can also take away you know take um take you out of that situation as a diver as as a, as a slight diversion so that uh, i think you know we should you know it's go it's good to go out to the youth market and introduce them but I think to really grow the hobby, we need to we need to look at something a little bit more generational later than that. Uh, well, very interesting, interesting question you propose there. So let's just step back, and we all have this grandiose Victorian perfect idea of the young kid and maybe early teens who's exposed by an Elmer to. Um, shortwave radio or something, and that kid, you know, learned to build a radio himself, built his own crystal radio first, and he works with his armor and he gets his, he passes his code and everything. You know, this this 1950s, you know, how wholesome is that idea, right? <laughs> like, oh, man, like, apple pie, the American flag, God bless America, look at it. You know, we have that idea. Um, <laughs> Today's kids, oh God, forget that. <laughs> I have a 12 year old upstairs. <laughs> like, wow. Like, if it's not on a phone, forget it. Um, so, I think we are, uh, we would shoot ourselves in the foot if we do not continue our outreach to the young under 18. Um, because there is always going to be those connections. And a lot of those connections turn into lifelong amateur radio operators. Mm -hmm. that, that's one. Uh, Michael brings up a very good point. What are we doing to the 25 to 40 year olds, the guys who are settling down, guys and gals, I'm sorry, uh, that are settling down that have disposable income, maybe before they get a kid or two, because you, you no longer have disposable income for like the first time. No, you don't. Kid. <laughs> and your disposable income is disposed to the diapers and everything else. Um, mm -hmm. 
but how do we what do we do to cater to them we don't we really don't like once you turn 18 we really don't give a rats you know what um we also don't cater out to the people who are late 50s early 60s the people who are the everyone's out of the house empty nest they're mm-hmm. at a position in their careers where they do have more time they have a lot more disposable income looking they to pick buy, up a hobby they can pick up the bigger radios right we don't yeah. really reach out to them either though do we we don't we don't we really don't um so michael is right i think you, you want to start him young but here's another thing Amateur radio li- active amateur radio license right now are higher than they ever been in the United States. Mm-hmm. So, in perspective, are we are we already doing a really good job? Because not everyone's going to get into amateur radio. Don't get that. Uh, everyone down, everyone on your block's not going to have a radio. It's not going to no. happen. Everyone's no. got different interests and desires and everything else. So uh, the idea that we can convert everyone to hams, <laughs> forget that. You know, one in ten, I think, is a is a pie in the sky that you're never going to reach. Um, but we're doing really good right now. With what we're doing, um, just based on the numbers, mm-hmm. um, how many of those renew after ten years? And some people will argue that um, we're at the point now where anyone can get into hobby for thirty bucks with a pretty with a much. Bowel. You know, Pretty much, yeah. there's so much stuff out there. And most of the time, if you find someone that kind of becomes your elder, your mentor, stuff just sends up on your doorstep some days. And that's how I started. <laughs> and, and Michael said, you know, you'll say the same yeah. thing, Michael, that you've oh, yeah. done the same thing. And it happened to you. Some people, when you, 20 years ago, when you got licensed, someone probably gave you something and you ran that till it fell apart. I so ended up with junk. Yeah. Yeah. And I've but, given but away I, stuff. And mm-hmm. Yeah. But the thing is is that the younger generations, the, um, we have Gen X, and I think I'm at the end of Gen X, you're a generation, generation X. And then I'm, solid, I'm a solid Xer, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, the I don't, younger I don't generation, <laughs> the 20 to 30 years olds right now, it's a little bit older, they don't, there's not so much of a social bond as much anymore. It's all online, you know. It's it's all um, uh, Facebook and Twitter and groups and social media and stuff like that. There, it's mm-hmm. very different for them to reach out and have a face to face relationship with a mentor. So we lose something with that, and that's something that's going to be a very difficult barrier to break through. I think. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's it's just weird and it, and i think i said this before is that remember 20 30 40 years ago we always had strong lions clubs we always had strong masonic organizations we always mm-hmm. had strong ham radio clubs 50 100 people you know show up to a meeting we don't have clubs that much anymore the masons and the elks and the moose and the lions are all scrambling to find oh, people to join their are. organization. And ham radio yep. clubs are too. It's not because yep. we're less hams. No. It's because people don't associate with the groups as much as they used to. And that's correct. Interesting. But um, we got some comments in here. Um, I'm going to start off with Alan. Um, good point. I got my ticket at age 27. Also, I was 30 when I got mine. Mm-hmm. So it's the kids were 34. Were, so yeah, 34, right so, yep. mm-hmm. I think getting people who have their license, but, uh, you know, but don't operate or, you know, on the air is, you know, I think people have their license, but don't operate back on the air is a really good thing to do. And I think, you know, maybe that's one of the advantages of getting, if you get, get a youth involved and get their license at say like 15, 16, you know, maybe, you know, you, you plant that seed that just that little nugget that in 15 years might sprout mm-hmm. into something else. So it's a, that's an opportunity. Uh, Dave, wish the college ham radio clubs would make a comeback. Uh, they would in, introduce more folks into the hobby. I wish I was interested in ham radio when I was in college because I would have been totally I'd be totally all over that. Um, the University mm-hmm. of Wisconsin had a kick ass club back then. So. You know, and Dave, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think the, the, the sad thing is, is that 
the college student is just oversaturated with everything. Not yes. only you know the whole debt load and everything else, but you know there's so many things going out there and trying to grab their attention. From it, it's it, almost impossible to get you know to grab if you can get their attention for ten seconds. That's like mm-hmm. worth a mint. It, it college is not what it used to be. It, it's mm-hmm. it's not good. I will say that. And yeah. then it comes to me is after I got out of college, I worked with a fraternity for uh, over 12 years on a board of directors. And I saw like development stuff and it, it is awful. It's really awful. So um, I don't want to say don't go to the colleges, but uh, you are going to put a lot of effort, a lot of time and, and investment into mm-hmm. it. And you're not going to get a lot of return out of it. Here's a good one. I like this one. Steve says, my first exposure to ham radio was reading the Mad Scientist Club as a kid. You read those books too? Oh, man. <laughs> I need to buy love... book. That sounds great. Oh, I love the Mad Scientist Club. That was a great book. They've been around forever. So I'm going to look these up. That sounds like a trivia question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to, you're, you, you'll love them. You'll, you'll love it. Uh, there was some other, yeah, um, there was another good book series that had it ham radio element in it too and i'm, I'm trying to remember the name mm-hmm. um it'll, it'll i'm sure it'll come to me uh let's see uh andrew targeting parents has the potential to bring youth in with them maybe focusing on amateur radio as a family hobby is a mm-hmm. thought my daughter right. got her license my son did not so well you know, we maybe, gotta talk yeah. to carl about that we keep telling yeah you got a yeah. cd in the truck <laughs> come on carl <laughs> You know, but you bring up a good point, you know, family hobby night. Yeah. How many of us sit around the table and even eat dinner anymore? It doesn't happen as much as we think it does. No, no, it doesn't. Especially as the kids get older. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brent says, help Moorhead State University required the space program students to get their tech license if they wanted to pass the uh, their the class. So, well, there's, there's, there you go. Um. And then from that, you know, the follow up, there's a few that sparked an interest that they didn't know they had. Mm-hmm. So we need we need to um, expand our, our 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 horizons. You know, if we're if we're going to bring more people into the hobby, we can't just be po- focused on one age group or demographic. And we need to. Yeah, we need we just need to be Absolutely. looking, looking um, broader than that. So. Thank you so much for the questions. If you keep sending them, we'll keep answering them. Feel free to leave your questions and comments down in the comment area below. I'll filter through them, and who knows, yours may end up on our next Your Questions Answered live stream. Our Q&A live streams happen on the first Thursday of the month, starting at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. I hope to see you there. For more articles and information, along with a full line of VHF and UHF antennas for sale, please check out my website at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. Check us out on Patreon. Patrons gain access to exclusive content, and our patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over on patreon.com slash kb9vbr antennas. Well, give us that thumbs up if you like this video, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here. That's your best way to be notified when a new video is released. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day, and 73.